A counting story. Goldilocks, a girl of many digits. Once there was a little girl called Goldilocks. What a sweet child, said someone new in the town. That's what you think, said a neighbor. One morning, Goldilocks' mother sent her to buy muffins in the next village. You must promise not to take the shortcut through the forest, she said. I've heard that bears live there. I promise, said Goldilocks. But to tell the truth, Goldilocks was one of those naughty little girls who did exactly as they please. Goldilocks had many different options of routes for her to complete her walk through the forest. All of these options can be demonstrated in Pascal's Triangle. Using Pascal's Triangle, it's clear to see that there is a total of six different routes that Goldilocks could take through the forest. Meanwhile, in a clearing deeper inside the forest, in a charming house all their own, a family of brown bears was sitting down to breakfast. Patooey, cried big old Papa Bear. This porridge is scalding. I've burned my tongue. I'm dying, cried Baby Bear. Not really, said Mama Bear, who was of medium size. That's quite enough. I know, said Papa Bear. Why don't we go for a spin while the porridge is cooling? Excellent, said Mama Bear. So they got on their rusty old bicycle and off they went. A few minutes later, Goldilocks arrived at the bear's house. She walked right in and without even bothering to knock. On the dining room table, there were three inviting bowls of porridge. Without seeing her reaction, we could determine the probability that she will like either the hot, the cold, or the just right porridge for, by using the theoretical formula for probability PA equals NA over NS. NA is the number of elements in the event space, and NS is the number of elements in the sample space. So for example, hot porridge, the probability that she will like it, is one-third. It is also one-third for cold and just right, because they all have the same number of elements in the event space, and they all have the same number of elements in the sample space. These probabilities can also be represented in tree diagrams. These probabilities can also be represented in a Venn diagram. I don't mind if I do, said Goldilocks, helping herself to the biggest bowl. But the porridge in the biggest bowl was much too hot. Patooey, cried Goldilocks as she spat it out. Next she tasted the porridge in the medium-sized bowl, but that porridge was much too cold. Then Goldilocks tasted the porridge in the little bowl, and it was just right, neither too hot nor too cold. In fact, she liked it so much that she gobbled, gobbled it all up. So now that we know that Goldilocks only liked the just right porridge, we can now determine all of the different ways or orders that she could have eaten the cold, the just right, and the hot porridge. To determine all these possibilities, we will use permutations. So there's three options of temperature of porridge. There's cold, just right, and hot. Because it's a permutation, order does matter. Therefore, we can think of it as 3 times 2 times 1, because as each option gets selected, the number of available options left reduces accordingly. So we can write this as 3 factorial, which equals 3 times 2 times 1, which equals 6. The event of Goldilocks deciding which porridge she likes best is a simple event, because there's only one porridge that she likes, therefore there's only one outcome. The event space in the event that Goldilocks is choosing one porridge that she likes best out of three is three, because there's a total of three different outcomes that she could choose. The event of Goldilocks choosing one porridge out of three is a mutually exclusive event. This is because once she determines her favorite porridge, there is no overlap with another porridge. So for example, the probability of her choosing a hot porridge and a cold porridge, that just doesn't exist. Feeling full and satisfied, Goldilocks thought it would be great fun to have a look around. Right away she noticed a lot of coarse brown fur everywhere. They must have kitties, she said. In the parlor there were three chairs. I don't mind if I do, she said, climbing into the biggest one. But the biggest chair was much too hard and she just couldn't get comfortable. Next, she sat in the medium sized chair. But that chair was much too soft. And she thought she might never get out of it. Then Goldilocks sat in the little chair, and that was just right, neither too hard nor too soft. In fact, she liked it so much that she rocked and rocked until the chair fell completely to pieces. The chair could have created many different sensations for Goldilocks. These can be demonstrated in a tree diagram. So we have Goldilocks, then we have the three options of chair, of the size of the chair, and then we also have the three options of the sensation that occurred, but they also could could accord to different chairs. So all in all you have one times the three sizes of chairs times the nine possible sensations. So that equals 27 possible sensations. Now all that rocking left Goldilocks quite tuckered out. I could take a little snooze, she said. So she went to look for a comfy place to nap. 
Upstairs there were three beds. I don't mind if I do, said Goldilocks, and she got into the biggest one. But the head of the biggest bed was much too high. Next she tried the medium-sized bed, but the head of that bed was much too low. Then Goldilocks tried the little bed, and it was just right. Soon she was all nice and cozy and sound asleep. She did not hear the bears come home. The probability that Goldilocks fell asleep in the smallest bed is a dependent event because the unpleasant occurrences in the other beds increase the probability that Goldilocks would fall asleep in the smallest bed. At first glance, although the beds all looked the same to Goldilocks, however, when she laid on them, she discovered they all had their own characteristics. They were either too high or too low, or they were just right. The probability of her choosing the bed that was too high was 3 choose 1, or 3 1 which is a different way of writing three choose one. The three bears were mighty hungry, but when they went in for breakfast, they could scarcely believe their eyes. <laughs> Somebody has been in my porridge, said Mama Bear. Someone has been in my place, said Baby Bear, and eaten it all up. In the parlor, the three bears were in for another little surprise. Somebody's been sitting in my chair, said Papa Bear. Somebody's been sitting in my chair, said Mama Bear. Broken into smithereens. The three bears went upstairs on tiptoe, not knowing what they would discover. At first, everything seemed fine, but then Papa Bear laid down on his big brass bed. Someone has been lying in my bed, he cried, and he was not amused. Egads! cried Mama Bear. Someone has been lying in my bed. Look! cried Baby Bear. Someone has been lying in my bed, and she's still there. Now see here, roared Papa Bear. Goldilocks woke up with a start, and her eyes nearly popped out of her head. But before the bears could demand a proper explanation, Goldilocks was out of bed, out the window, and on her way home. Who was that girl? asked Baby Bear. I have no idea, said Mama Bear, but I hope we never see her again. The probability that Goldilocks would survive the three hungry, angry bears that just came home is very unlikely. However, somehow she managed to do just that. We are still awaiting the mathematical evidence to explain this rare occurrence. The End